Michelle and Christine Denis Uo's life is an unusual one. They're animal photographers specializing in African wildlife. Their photos regularly appear in magazines across the world. Their books have been translated into many languages and the most famous publishers represent them. They've earned international distinction by winning the prestigious World Press Prize for their work on wildebeest migration. Ever since I was a boy, I've been crazy about animals, really interested in observing their behavior. I completed most of my vet's training, but then, well, sounds silly, really, but I dropped out before my final year. Stupid of me, I know. But when you're really into something, I just knew that animal photography was what really interested me, what I really wanted to do. So I gave it all up so I could try to make it as an animal photographer. When he was 18, Michel managed, after long hours staking out the woods near his home, to photograph some wild boars fighting. The photos were immediately snapped up by an agency. Dreaming of life as a wildlife vet, he carried on with his photography, but acquired a solid grounding in zoology. Michel divides his time between Normandy and Kenya. Christine spends more time in France. She looks after their son David, comes up with ideas for new articles, and deals with the press and publishers. We know a bit about the different editors' preferences, so we know whether certain photos are going to sell or not. Then we have to figure out which ones go together well and try and come up with a story. And then there are the upcoming books to work on, because we've always got that next book in mind. We don't really split up the work since we are each taking photos. Personally, what interests me the most is taking the photos and processing them. Christine does the writing, chooses the photos, and puts the article together. The photos are probably not the easiest bit to come up with, but they're the most exciting, in the sense that something really extraordinary can always happen. And they're the most fun. Oh yes, they're the fun part, that's for sure. We could give it just a little bit more saturation. It's a bit brighter there, and over here, it's perhaps a bit dark. Actually, that's the white eye reflection leaving a white streak. Look, you've got a double reflection here. Yeah, yeah. We don't work for him as much as we used to. Since he's gone digital, there's no more slides to process, just shots that need to be printed for exhibitions. It used to be a lot more frantic when he brought in the slides. When things were quiet, we could process maximum 80 to 100 films a day. He'd bring 400 in and want to see them all in two days. I'd be standing there on the end of the machine, waiting for my film to come out. Lovely. Everything OK, Jean-Jacques? Fine. Great. Their colors are right, uh, even in the darker area here. Two months in Le Havre and he's just impossible. Not even two months, just a month and a half and he's already just got one thing on his mind and that's when will he be on that plane, when's he going back? It drives him totally nuts. It's true, I do really want to get back there after a month and a half here, but at the same time, after a month and a half in Africa, I want to come home, so, you know. Tucked away in a Nairobi garage waits a magical vehicle. The Duny Uo's 4x4 was custom built for photographing animals and life in the bush. It has been designed right down to the last detail to be the fruit of 25 years of tracking African wildlife. Every one of these trips represents a considerable investment of both time and money. Every trip, you have to go for that perfect photo, the one that'll catch the eye of the editors or the publishers. Western Kenya is a paradise for wildlife photographers. It's one of the rare places where you can find such a wide variety of animals.
This is where filmmakers and photographers from all over the world meet up. There's a lovely light on the flamingos in the water. The shots are all taken from the vehicle for a very simple reason. Apart from the flamingos, you can always creep up on them if you keep down low. With most animals, if you're standing up, the human form just terrifies them and they run off. But on the other hand, they're totally unbothered by a vehicle. I tend to work in really tight close-up, very close and very composed shots. I use the whole of the frame to the maximum possible limit of what it'll hold. Christine tends to work with much wider shots that leave more background around the subject. We don't credit our photos to only one or the other of us. We take joint credit for them. Christine and Michel Denis Hugo. All of the pictures are signed by both of us. To make it easier to get the photography permits that are essential for the national parks, Michel has taken Kenyan residency. The females aren't doing much today. No, not the lionesses. It's the little ones. They just want to play as usual. And sometimes they play even if they don't really want to. That's kids for you. The males are always being... The males are always being... Doormats. That's more like it. There, that's it. Don't move your ear, don't move. In the Masai Mara National Park, the wildlife is so dense that one's simply astonished by the proximity between the predators and the prey. Over 25 years, the Duniyuos have learned how to locate the prides of resident lions who over time have virtually become the stars of the couple's finest photographs. What animal photography is really all about is searching for the impossible, getting that mind-blowing image. You can go for days and days and not see anything particularly extraordinary. And then suddenly, there's that magic moment. You have to be really stealthy sometimes, but you get that satisfaction of knowing you've got that special shot. Pictures of the big cats as they hunt are sought after by the magazines. They're difficult pictures to take because everything happens at lightning speed. In the heat of the day, the best plan is to look for cheetahs since they hunt during the day, unlike the lions who prefer to lie around in the shade. We were driving along and suddenly in the middle of the plain, we saw this python. Beautiful beast, must have been about 2 meters 20 long. I got out of the car to photograph it from the right height. Bloody hell. Python got away and wrapped itself around my back wheel. So I had to start taking off the wheel to get it out of there. The head is just there. Yeah, I can see. Maybe I don't need to use the jack. Okay, I'll let you do it. Be careful. He doesn't look too bothered. No, he seems pretty cool. He hasn't made his little noise. He's not hissing or anything. 
No, he seems pretty calm. Damn it. He didn't bite me, fortunately. Right. I've got his head. Chris? Okay, it's okay. He's coming out. The worst thing that can happen is that you get a bit bitten. Well, it's not venomous. It can hurt you a bit, but if you're careful, it's not really too risky. One of a wildlife photographer's skills is knowing how to create opportunities. Christine and Michelle have decided to take a detour to see this group of hippopotamuses that is hiding out in this swamp behind little hills. It's one of the rare groups that are actually approachable. Look, there's a baby one. Okay, we'll go easy here. Let's try and keep them there. There's a baby one, don't frighten them. Mustn't get too close. There are lots of jacana birds. I'll try and get down there nice and easy. Take it easy. Not too close. Well, that frightened them a bit. We'll go down nice and easy. There. That's a nice shot there. A nice angle. What should I use? The 7200? Well, yes. If we get a bit of action. We're better off here than over there. We're up above them, so we can get the best shots. Even the wide shot's not bad either. Look at that big guy sticking his nose up. There's Jakana's behind. Look at the little one there, the little one. Wait, look. Pity his head's around the wrong way. You know, I, I can't really help here. I can just tell you what they're doing, but that... I don't know. It's not that great. You can get the 500. But if they move, I'll better stay with the 7200. If they start fighting, I can't get a shot. Look at the one on the right. I need him to turn around a bit. There you go. Think you got him there. And a nice hippo's head behind him. Great. In Africa, the hours available for taking good photographs are limited. By the middle of the day, the light has become too harsh. The car's water and petrol tanks give it an autonomy far from civilization of up to three weeks. Can you get the pressure cooker out? The pressure cooker. There's not going to be much left. We're obviously typically French because we always try to cook a little something for ourselves. We always have time to have a good lunch, since we don't take any photos between 10.30 and 3 in the afternoon. And we have very good ingredients, good meat and really good fruit and vegetables, which makes it a pleasure to cook. We couldn't live on tins of food. We don't do that in France and we don't want to do it here. It's cloudy. Yes, when it's cloudy, the animals usually move around quite a bit. I'll take a look. Yeah, maybe there's something going on. Hey, look. Huh? Car. Isn't that John's car? Where? John, John, do you copy? Are you busy over there? I'm just coming to see you, eh? You going to see him? Yeah, we'll say hi. No matter how skillful, how experienced you are, if you want to find some cheaters, you have to take a few tips from your fellow bushmen. Hi. 
We run into some local drivers, people who live on the reserve. They're here all the time and they keep an eye on the animals too. These people aren't just drivers, they're people who love nature too. And we exchange a lot of information like that. We bump into each other and we chat. Okay. And also there was this uh, three brother cheetahs. Oh yeah. You hear about them? You saw them? Yeah, yeah I saw them. Where is they it? Were around, you see the big swamp. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Down. Uh, the young brother. Yeah, three, the three, three young males. Oh, okay, maybe we're yeah. going to try. They are moving actually. a lot, but. They are moving a lot, yeah. Yeah, maybe we're going to try to find them, yeah. So we're going to have a look over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll look, just... maybe you'll get it. Yeah, maybe yeah, going yeah, now. Yeah. After 25 years in the bush, you get to know not only the men, but also the animals pretty well. Michelle and Christine first watched these three cheetahs when they were cubs following their mother around. But they have to be quick. Cheetahs are highly mobile. They can easily cover 60 kilometers in a day. We've just found the three cheetah brothers. Looks like they have pretty flat tummies. They can't have been out hunting since yesterday morning. They'll be off soon. Oh, I think we're going to get some action. Thing is, Will we be in the right spot? Will it be okay? That's another problem. Well, there's not much about. Oh yeah, there's some wildebeest. Oh, some nice wildebeest. Oh, he's off. Look, look. We're really badly... Really badly placed. We haven't got the right angle. He stopped. It's sad to say, but we do miss a lot of hunts because most of the time the hunting simply doesn't happen where we'd hoped it would happen. So we have to choose our spot and then we have to be careful not to interfere with the animals. We try not to alert the prey to the presence of the cheetah and then we try to anticipate the action. Maybe we could go over behind governors. Let's get in a good position for the light. Anyway, it'll be coming from over there. So now we just wait. Sooner or later there'll be some good action or good light. We'll get ourselves well positioned. It's looking very pretty right now, with the plain, and there's a lovely dark sky coming up in the background. That could give us a nice atmosphere, with the cheetahs on the plain, with a beautiful dark sky, and maybe even some hunting if we're lucky. Animal photography is all a lot of waiting around for not a lot of action. So you have to keep yourself occupied. There's days when we pass our time just looking at the plane. But after a while, when there's nothing happening, like now, we do a bit of sudoku. Or we read a book to pass the time while we're waiting for something to happen. So when they're getting ready to hunt, when we reckon there's going to be a hunt, I get up on the roof and I usually have the 500 millimeter and we each try to do the best we can. Look out, he's off, he's off, Chris. It's too far. I can't shoot. He's behind the little one. She's down. She's fallen. Let's go. I'm stopping here. I'm going to stop. I'm in position. No, they didn't get her. They haven't killed her. There, she's getting back up. No, I can't get it. Too close. You have to be at at least one eight hundredth or one thousandth to catch something like we just saw. After all, a cheetah can get up to 100 kilometers an hour. Well, I don't think these three cheetahs were going as fast as that, because it's only a very little gazelle, but they must have been going at at least 70 or 80 kilometers an hour. 
When the hunt started, we weren't in the right place, but then we got lucky and it turned back towards us. And because it was just a little gazelle, instead of killing it straight away, they decided to play with it. They often do that. The hunt turned right round towards us so that we managed to get some really good pictures of it. No, I've got grass blocking me. No, not very interesting there. Ah, 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 look. One of them's making off with a bit of the meal. He doesn't want to share. What is animal photography? Well, animal photography is all about showing what you've seen. First of all, because you're excited by it. Secondly, because you think it's got something to say. This natural beauty, this wonderful place we're in here, is only here because it's been protected. So if there's nobody to bear witness to the beauty of these places, that protection will evaporate. And that's what we're here for. That's our job as animal photographers, to show this beauty, not just harsh images. This morning, we were photographing two lionesses licking each other. So it's the tender side of nature as well as its tough side. Or these sumptuous landscapes, that hill with a flat top, all these herds around us. One of the magical things about the Masai Mara is these storms that usually come from the east or from Lake Victoria. All of a sudden, the sky starts turning really black, but with the sun still shining. And that gives these absolutely extraordinary backgrounds, these black skies with light and with animals against them. I don't know if he's eating or chewing cud. He's got a bit of a nasty grin. Look at him. Are the herons annoying him? No, it's us, more likely. We're right in his way. We're going to end up with a hippo on the hood. We've had a python in the wheels. No, a hippo on the hood's all we need. It's not bad, despite the rain. No, yeah, it's nice in the rain. He's not in frame anymore. What do you mean he's not in frame? I haven't got all of him in. OK, right. From straight on, a little heron right in front of his nose there. I love taking photos in the rain. We get really astonishing shots. When we're lucky enough to get really good rain, when it's raining really hard, we get a fantastic mood in the shots. Go on. That one's good. That's not so no, good. No, 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 no. Bin it. No, no. No, no good. There I framed it off so it works. Takes flight. No, 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 no. I prefer that one. That one's not bad. That's nice. The one before is no good. 
This one. This one's full frame on the screen. That's good. That. No. That. That one's no. not bad, with his paw up, look. That's good. That. No. Oh, I like that. Look at his face. Look how he is there. Yes. He's great there. We can keep that. We never agree about choosing the shots. Well, I'm exaggerating. It's just that we often argue. Sometimes I want to keep too many of them. There are some that Michelle just loves and that I don't like at all. So each of us has to give a little ground. At least when I'm alone, I can eliminate what I don't want. If Christine's there, it's more difficult. But still, it still works pretty well. That's fun. Go a bit closer in on the head. In any case, we have to regularly spend some time apart, because otherwise it would be hell working together, living together. It's very no. difficult. No, that's useless, useless. And now we've got the hippo this afternoon in the rain. That's great. You seen that? You can see the rain on his skin. The hippo's really sharp there. I was afraid he'd be a bit overexposed. What were you at? At 80th of a second at F9. All oh, right. That's not so good. This one's still the best. This is the best. This is a bit wider. Yeah, this second one is a bit better. Oh, that's a lot better. Nice shiny nose there. That's the one I like. What's great is, for once, the hippopotamus was wet. There are the two little... The two little herons, yeah. A bit better there, perhaps. A wider shot. You try to get a horizontal. You've done all verticals. Yes, I just did verticals. Go on. That one's not good. Oh, yeah, that one isn't good. No, I think I've got better ones. I feel like Africa's my second country. Or maybe it's my first. And France is my second. I don't know. I can't really figure out which country is more important to me. France or Africa. Or at any rate, Kenya. I think if I lived here full time, it'd get a bit heavy going because there are a lot of things we'd start missing very much. But on the other hand, to live permanently in France would soon get hard to take as well because I'd miss Africa. Ah, it's hot too. It's too hot even. Did you call me? No, nothing. Is it ready? Yes, it's ready. Mm, yes, well, I would have rather stayed in bed. I'll just finish my shower and I'm done. One of the absolutely essential accessories in our vehicle is the roof tent, because there we can actually sleep two meters above the animals and they never bother us. In fact, we love having lions all around the car. We feel completely safe with our roof tent, even in very bad weather. We've got a dry place to sleep and we're just fine. We like being woken up by the lions or by the hyenas crying out in the night. A bit masochistic, perhaps, but, you know, we like it. Their great strength is their mobility. They can camp where they like, free to follow the animals anywhere. And they can be there at the right moment, at those magic hours of dusk and dawn, when the tourists haven't yet arrived or have had to go back to their lodges. These are the special moments, when the great spectacle of animal life takes place, the spectacle that so few ever get to see or to photograph. It's mating season for the lions. This is a real challenge. Sometimes it can take several days to get that perfect photo. Let's say that when they get going, you see them mating every 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, for two or three days. But anyway, it's worth spending two or three hours with the lions when they've started to mate, because then you can take a whole series of photos, and you can try to vary the framing of the shots. Because sometimes they're just showing us their behinds and we don't get any good profiles. We can't always move around. Sometimes it takes five, six or seven matings for us to get what we wanted. Generally, it's the female that instigates the mating. And when that happens, she goes over to the male, and they usually go off a little way. So we're always ending up in the wrong place, even if we were in just the right place to start with. 
They move off, so then we have to move as well, at the same time. The problem is, the mating only takes a few seconds, three, four, five seconds maximum. So by the time you've moved the vehicle, found a new position, got the right angle, with no grass in the way and no bushes, the mating's often over. right way around. Nearly right. Okay. I wasn't focused. Shit. Three, four, five, six. When the lion starts biting the female's neck, Sometimes she'll react a bit, if he bites a bit too hard. She'll show her teeth, and him too. So that's the kind of shot we're trying to get. We managed to get that in a few shots. So that's quite satisfying. And then we managed to get some with a beautiful light. The second series, where the light's a bit grey, but there are some splashes of light behind, and it's very pretty. With their images of play and of tenderness, the series on baby animals are always very much in demand for magazines or for children's books. It may be easy at Masai Mara to approach wild animals in a car, but anyone who does so should remain mindful that they are dangerous. One of these Maasai cattle breeders' cows has been attacked during the night. The lack of fresh grass leads them to graze their herds deep into the park, which is not normally allowed. Once a year, long columns of wildebeest converge on the banks of the River Mara and gather there in huge herds. This is known as the Great Migration. With one shared impulse, the animals all move on with the rains in search of grazing and water. The most interesting moment for a photographer is when they all mass together by the river Mara and then cross it. All the dust is really good for creating an atmosphere and giving that impression that some photos have of being a painting. So we're both busy, one on the roof for example, the other at the door, and we're probably feeling quite nervous. That's it, they're all nicely lined up. I've got a square shot here. You like square shots, don't you? Then straight ahead. There's the flight. Is it a flight of storks? 
right? Yeah. These are flocks of storks that move around from plane to plane looking for food. They must be having a bit of a hard time at the moment because it's really dry. There aren't many insects or little frogs, all the animals that they usually feed on. But the main body of them aren't landing. It's a pity. What would have been nice would have been a fire, like we had that other time. But there isn't one. There's no fire. The storks take advantage of the natural bushfires to feed on all the insects sent up by the flames. The fire then serves as a filter that gives an impressionistic look to the photographs. All over the Masai Mara are airfields that ferry tourists to and from the lodges. Our two photographers often get the planes to deliver them their parcels of fresh food supplies from Nairobi. But today, Michelle has booked Richard's plane for a different purpose. To take aerial photographs, you have to have a plane with high wings so the photographer can take plunging shots. The doors have to be taken off to give the steepest possible viewing angle. Aerial photography gives you another angle on how you understand animals. But it's not so much animals, because in fact, when you take aerial photos, you're not really photographing animals, you're photographing animals in their environment. We don't ever take aerial shots in order to photograph the behavior of lions. It's more to show the great herds and their environment. Or to show a big hippo pool, somewhere where the hippos are concentrated together, with a nice view of the river, and all seen from above. Now that's really nice. Christine and Michelle's many years of experience have enabled them to categorize by both season and species the areas that interest them most. The area here around Double Gorge is a good place for leopards, the most secretive of all the big cats. Leopards are always a bit of a challenge for us. It's not easy to take a good photo of leopards. You've got to find them first of all, then you have to keep them in sight for quite a few hours if you want a bit of action. So we spend loads of time with them. It's a magnificent animal, the absolute essence of power, beauty and energy. The way it carries itself is absolutely gorgeous. He's right in among the black rocks, not bad. Jump, jump, jump. That's it. Go on. Up, 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 up. Go on. In the fork. Very good. 
Well, really, I think we're so attached to leopards because we spend so much time trying to follow them. It's an animal that can hide anywhere, can slip through anywhere. You can lose him if you so much as blink. And if he decides he's off, you can just lose him. He can hide out in a creek bed, he can hide in a thicket. He can even get right in among the branches of a tree so you can't see him. The leopard tends to store its prey up in trees, out of harm's way. Are you taking the position? Yes, let's get a GPS reading, because that's... These trees all look the same. Around here, they all look the same. Mark it, there, enter. Okay, I've GPSed it. I'll wipe the last card. You're wiping the last card? Right, let's go. Well, couldn't have got that. It was tricky. No, no. I was setting the speed. Now that's better. It's a much better pose. Oh, he's yawning. He's yawning, but that one's not so good. There is good. No, that's the one. It's the bush I don't like there in the second one. Okay, then take the first one. I'll take the first one. This here is even better. There you've got grass in the way. There's something in front of there. That's when he's under the tree before he climbs. Nice and upright, head back. Yes, but look at that. Yes. He's just ready one. to go up in the tree there. He's thinking about it. The same. Two the same. There again, three. Four the same. You can hear some thunder. That's nice. Yes, the hind paws are a bit blurred. Right, but the head and the front feet are sharp. There it's not quite frame right. Out of frame. There too. There, the head's behind the tree. No. There, it's behind. Not ah, bad. Ah, there, that's starting to look good. Our story is a bit complicated. Well, at least mine is at any rate. I was a computer engineer, so I wasn't intending to be an animal photographer at all when I first started out. I had absolutely nothing to do with the animal world. But I did really like photography and I really liked traveling. So I used to take photos of landscapes and photos of people. I was traveling a lot and mostly with the agency Michelle was a guide for. We fell for each other. We could do a nice article on that. And then when I went back to Tanzania, I finally decided I was going to jack it all in. I'm going to follow this man who was married, so that made things a bit problematic. At the time, I wasn't single either. So for a year, there was a bit of a difficult gap for both of us. So I didn't hesitate. I abandoned everything and said to myself I'd learn as I went along. We stayed put for a year in Tanzania, and I got the hang of it, you know. There are a few photos that stand out for us. For example, well, I don't know, because they won a competition. I'm thinking, for example, of the dolphin that's leaping in front of the bow of a tanker. That's not an African photo, but it's one that stays with you. There's also a photo of two hippopotamuses at sunset yawning. Those are photos you always remember, you know. I don't know if that's my favorite photo, but let's just say it's one photo that comes to mind straight away when somebody asks me that sort of question. Otherwise, perhaps my favorite photo is the last one he took before I arrived in Kenya. It's a photo of baboons, of baboons fighting. I think it's extraordinary. They were fighting on this ground that was all dusty, so that gives it lots of atmosphere. They were fighting over a baby Thompson's gazelle, and so they'd gone completely crazy, and it's that crazy side of baboons that comes over in that photo. She's getting near the buffaloes. Careful, careful, go gently, gently. 
They're really close. They're attacking. Come on, come on, open. Come on, we're off. Let me lock it. No, don't. Forget it, leave it. Right, position the car. They've got the buffalo. It's down. Shit, the other buffaloes are chasing the lioness. There. Come on, come on. Look at them. The other buffaloes. Shit, that's so stupid. Well, that's some really extraordinary action. Just a fabulous sequence. We've never seen anything like that, because we've seen them hunting buffalo, and usually it's in bad light conditions, and they always, always try and chase a solitary buffalo. They never, ever try to chase a buffalo in the herd. That's really something amazing. What are you doing? Pass me in the camera. There's a 300 with 18 shots left on it. Okay. You know, it's virtually the first time we've been there for a great buffalo hunt. We didn't just get the action itself, we got everything that's going on around it, all the movements of the buffaloes. And it's really great that Christine was with me this time too, because I spend a lot of time alone out here in the bush. But with Christine with me, we could shoot simultaneously. I was working in close-up and she was getting the much wider shots. So we shared the shots between us and we managed like that to get a variety of images. And we've got the same action in both tight close-up and in longer shots. So that's all really interesting. And it was a hunt that had all sorts of other things going on around it. They're suffocating him. They're knocking him over. Have you seen the lioness? The one who's pulling? There's one who's hanging on underneath, pulling. Some of the images are very, very harsh, but nature's like that. Nature isn't tender. But it's not even a question of whether it's tender or not. That sort of concept just doesn't exist for the animals. For me, it's like being war correspondents, same sort of thing. War correspondents are going to see horrible things, and the distance created by the viewfinder and the fact that you have to bring back the shots mean you end up feeling detached from what you're seeing. There you go. That's progress. Ah, oh, yes, real progress. You can see how the... it really works. With digital cameras, I don't take so many shots these days. Even so, I always bring back several thousand images. I'd say about seven or eight thousand photos. And they all have to be sorted through again. In the end, there must be, I don't know, three or four thousand photos that have potential, that are good. But then, the really good ones, the very good ones, there are three, four, up to about ten photos out of two months of shooting, no more than that. Sometimes there are trips when there are no exceptional photos. But the really good photos, personally I'd say there are still about 30 per trip. Perhaps not really the perfect one, but I'd say there must be 30 very good ones. Animal photography touches a wide public because it promotes universal values. It speaks of maternal love, of domination, of violence, of death. In a few weeks, Michel will be off again to Kenya. Christine will be joining him after David's final exams. 
Six weeks of freedom in the protected savannah, hunting once more for the perfect photo.